So we're here to talk about productivity. We're not here to talk about working 24 seven. We're here to talk about having work-life balance, but also weaponizing and monetizing our time and our data. So as you've already seen, myself, Rose and Matt are on the call today. We've done some other webinars in the last couple of months, sourcing, uh, business development, uh, 10 things to do before 10 a.m., which has just gone live on our HIT platform. And if you want more information about HIT, you're going to get some in the next few seconds. Remember what we do as a business. We love training. We love shining lights on stuff, helping people save time, help them build more, help recruitment leaders on board new starters with, with less stress and help experienced staff who just need that leg up because the world's moving at such a quick pace. Loads of stuff. We do a load of rec tech stuff as well. Bullhorn first, we tend to call it. Let's get you using the system better. And we do a lot of automation. Rose and Matt are amazing at automation. There might even just be two automations right in front of you now and they're actually training some clients. <laughs> Who knows? Remember, we've got recruitment hits. Some of our lovely clients are on the webinar today. Uh, they are used to using recruitment hit. One of our clients is in the bottom right hand corner. Apparently he wakes up, has a coffee and then watches a bit of hit. That was a picture that he sent me. I thought that was gorgeous. So remember, recruitment here is a couple of minutes, bit of training, get back on the phone. That's what we like. Yeah. Lots of really cool stuff about teams, selling, recruitment, bullhorn, bullhorn automation, analytics, source breaker, Daxtra, pager. There's crazy amounts of stuff on there, all designed to help you have a better pipeline. We know, serious now, serious. Let's pretend it's Elf. We know that we are wasting a crazy amount of time in recruitment. I've just recorded a really cool webinar with a lady called Tracy, who's also known as the data consultant. And she uh, analyzes recruiters and how they spend their time and how productive they are with their data. And a lot of the time, sometimes we're so busy in it, we don't know what we've got. And we don't know what to stop doing and we don't know what more to turn up. And also because our jobs can be quite seasonal and also we are as an industry, often quite reactive to economic environments and also, you know, sometimes reactive to what our clients are wanting us to do. It can be a big ask. Uh, so uh, a lot we do see a lot of time wasted and potentially not a straight enough spine in what works and what and, and analysing what works. But we do know there's way too much data entry. There's way too much time looking at stuff. There's too many systems and not enough process. And actually, there's a lot of unproductivity, which I think I've just created a word. We also know the industry suffers a lot from just a few things that we'd all like to bin in 2024. You know, I can't give you any more time, but certainly Rose and Matt will be able to give you some ideas of what you can do to bend time, make it more productive. And also, you know, a lot of you want to grow your desk rather than just work it. There's a big difference. And also protect it and secure it, I think, is really important as well. That's what being productive is all about. It's not just about, I'm sorry, it's not just about working on your current job. It's just about making sure that you've got the future seeds planted and you've protected yourself against all the other crap that is going on in the world right now, which is really distracting. We know that if we do things in the right order, thanks, Neve. if we do things in the right order, good things happen. Problem is, you could be on a nice straight road. You've got candidates running in front of you. Uh, if you're old enough to remember Frogger <laughs> from the 1980s, you'll know what that looks like. It's just chaos. And obviously, BD and account management really gets in the way of a good process, doesn't it? Candidates and clients get in the way of a great recruitment process. So a couple of stats to just help you focus. And if you've been on some of these webinars before, some of these will not be a surprise. You could probably run a better session than me. But we know that we are spending a lot of time not sourcing from our own data. And LinkedIn and job boards love that. They make a crazy amount of money from how unproductive as an industry we are. Well, we need to stop that. I'm on a mission, yeah? We're wasting a lot of time. We know that if we source from Bullhorn first, we place quicker. And I'm not going to ask you to get calculators out, but there's a crazy amount of 40 days in 365. Yeah, crazy amount of 60 days as well. So think about it. If you actually got your data sorted and was more productive, how many more candidates could you place in a year? How much more money would you take home in your pay packet? How many more cruises could you go on or houses could you buy? Or in my world, uh, shoes. There you go. Uh, we also know that we spend too much time sourcing. Again, LinkedIn and job boards love that. Uh, your candidates and clients don't, though. They don't pay you to source. They pay you to place and, and secure their businesses. And again, if you didn't have to do that, what would life be like? If you didn't have to use LinkedIn, you equally wouldn't be plowing on average 50% poor applications onto your bullhorn system and making your job even worse in the future. Yeah. So again, we're trying to reduce reliance. Here's something. This is something. 
that it's not just about being more productive. If you want to do more BD, and thank you, by the way, for falling into my wicked evil trap, this is something to really consider. What are you going to do if you could be more productive? How could you make more money? Well, referrals, would you believe, funnily enough, asking for a referral is a surefire way of making more money. But the industry is really pants at it. Yeah, 91% of clients said, I'll give a referral, but only 11% of people went, I ask for them. That's a really poor gap in the process. And all of you, that 30 or something percent of you that said you want more BD, well, that's definitely, uh, I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see what I'm talking about. The referrals piece is really important, guys and girls. I'm getting very serious. Look at my face. So we know that referrals are stronger. We know that they last longer, they are more satisfying, and they are fantastic for BD. And equally, business to business clients, of which most of yours are, Love them, love them. They love working with recruiters that other people have recommended. Just like if you're in a pub tonight with your mates and you say, oh, I've got an issue with my washing machine or my car or my cat or whatever it's going to be. If your mates tell you they've had a good experience, you'll buy that, won't you? Easy stuff. No different in your lovely worlds. You do a good job. You say to your clients and candidates, who else can I work with? Who else do you know? Build that into your process. Anyway, that's just a tip for you. If you want to make more money, source more effectively, all of those things to make you more productive. So if you could recruit easier with referrals, what would that mean? So think about your productivity strategy. This isn't just about working harder, hitting your keys harder, making more calls, hoping that you chuck enough at it, it works. This is about being strategic with the things that Rose and Matt are going to show you today. And it might be what they show you saves you time. And then you go, right, what am I going to do with it? Could I could I generate more, more referrals? Or could I just do more of the right stuff around sourcing or BD? Those kinds of things. So remember, we've had an automation webinar earlier this week geared towards businesses that have got automation or who are thinking about automation. If you want that webinar link, just put auto, you don't need to put mation, I'll save you a few characters in your chat and I'll send that to you outside of the webinar. It's a very quick watch and there's five, uh, I think at least five automations that Wayne talks about that would be really good for your business to help you make the business more automated. And if you have automation, but you don't know what's happening with it because you're not in the automation team, tell us and we'll send it to the people who need to watch it on your behalf to make your lives easier. I'm going to shut up now. I think I've done my job and I'm out of breath. So I'm going to cut, hide my camera and mute myself and hand over to the lovely Matt and Rose. And I'll just be joyfully clicking on the slides as we go along. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Lise. So today we're going to talk about three feet, three. Let me try that again. We're going to talk about three themes to do with productivity. We're going to give you two tips for navigation, two for streamlining your processes and two thinking about your data health. Want to click on to the next one for me, please, please? So, <clears throat> sort of high level view, we're going to talk about list layouts and startup screens. Then we're going to talk about those vacancy and placement tracks, really, really um, key for what Lisa talked about, about streamlining that admin and speeding up those processes. We're going to have a talk about working collaboratively, because as much as you would love to place and fill every single job on your CRM, sometimes you need to work with your team and sometimes you, you want to, your team to throw you a bit of a bit of a tip, bit of a hint, a little bit of a helping hand. And then finally, we're going to have a look at our desired categories and skills and then some quick checks you can do. <clears throat> right. So starting off with navigation, I'm going to hand it over to you, Rose. Excellent. Yes. So list layouts for me, really, really simple tip for using Bullhorn, simple but really effective. And as we know, kind of Sometimes the small things make can make a, a quite a big impact. So one thing that I see when we train a lot is people don't utilize this feature enough, I think. Um, we all use list in Bullhorn every day, but have you spent maybe even five to 10 minutes just saving some layouts so that you bring into the right data very, very quickly whenever you're looking at maybe certain types of candidates? So as you can see in the background, I've got some layouts set out for contract and perm recruitment. I've got some layouts set out for current workers and active candidates. And each of those will have different columns set in the background. So if I save those layouts, they're there for me to use going forward. And it's a couple of clicks just to bring that data through really, really quickly, make me productive. And then I can swap onto another one later if I want to. But it's an underutilized, but very simple feature, I think. So that's tip number one. 
Tip number two, your startup screens. So you log on in the morning, you open up Bullhorn, you open up your Outlook, you might open up Teams, etc. Once you've done all of that, you then go into your CRM and it's probably just a blank screen, which really isn't helpful. You can actually go into your preferences in Bullhorn and select what specific screens you want to open up when you open up Bullhorn. So if you think rather than logging on and then going, oh, I need to have a look at my tasks. I need to have a look at the candidates. I need to have a look at my shortlists. Log on to Bullhorn and when it loads up and gives you that big uh, bright screen to begin with, it's all there ready and waiting for you. May not seem like a lot, but if you think sometimes, you know, you might be logging on to Bullhorn two, three, four, five, six times a day, even depending on if you're taking lunch breaks, if you're having interviews, if you're going out and meeting people. Think about all of that time that saves over the course of a week, over a year, over a month. You know, it, it may seem like a small thing, but actually, when you think about it, that 30 seconds it saves you, multiply that out and it could be huge. Streamlining our data then. <clears throat> Rose, back to you. OK, so third number tip for str under streamlining is vacancy and placement tracks. Now, you might not know what these are. You might question whether you've got these set up on your system or not, but it's it's an admin um, feature that someone would need to set this up. So whoever would be your administrator in your business for Bullhorn. But they're very, very useful. So we can set up different versions of effectively vacancies when we see the screen, when we're adding the data and similar with placements as well. And the big thing for me is obviously streamlining. What that enables you to do is remove a lot of noise from your screens. So if again, if we use the examples here, if I'm adding on a contract vacancy, I only see contract fields and I don't get all the permanent fields that I don't need to worry about and vice versa. So saving lots of time and streamlining process. So next one is working collaboratively. So most of you are probably in small teams. Some of you are probably in very big teams. And what you'll come across is candidates, contacts, sometimes even jobs that are great, could definitely bring the business in money, but they aren't necessarily falling into your niche and your specialty. So you might want to give a heads up and shout over the desk. Oh, hey, Rose, have a look at this one. Have a look at that. Great in theory, but we all know what recruitment's like. You might, sh I might shout to Rose, Rose, have a look at this vacancy when you get the chance, and then Rose gets three screening calls for you, and by then it's completely gone. What you can do instead is either in Bullhorn, there's an option to create copy a shareable link, so you could quickly ping that across on Teams or on Outlook or something, or to really keep in with the Bullhorn first approach. When you create a note, you can actually tag in an internal user. So it goes directly to them. So it really is just about, you know, not only streamlining uh, how quickly you can work with your colleagues, but also about making sure that things don't get missed. And you never know, might get you a really nice juicy split. So uh, finally then, data health. Yeah, so our um, fifth number tip um, under the data category is desired categories and skills. Again, another, Thing, again, Matt might agree with me that we see in training a lot, which is very under, underutilized, is the coding element, the categorizing and skilling element on a contact. Sometimes it's misunderstood uh, the way that Bullhorn do it. So just to clarify a little bit, it's we're supposed to put what the contact desires, i.e. what candidates they will be looking for. But we see I see a lot of wasted time in BD, let's say, just trying to find the right contacts to the market candidates out to or do those calls. And then when I look at the system, we're not the, the client's not using desired categories and skills. And that would be a really quick, easy way just to match candidates against contacts. So yeah, maybe something to look into if you're not doing that at the moment. And finally, so your quick checks. Now we all know you might get a candidate comes across great over the phone. Great on the CV, but the last thing you want is when you put them forward to a um, placement and someone has a look at them on LinkedIn or Google and something questionable comes up because it's not going to look great on you and it's certainly not going to look great on the candidate. So I don't know if any of you have ever noticed it or paid it too much mind because I appreciate there's a lot on Bullhorn, but you'll notice next to your names, both on candidates and I believe contacts as well, Rose, if I'm right you will have a G icon. Now, if you click the G one, what it's going to do is launch a Google search straight away. Now, 
Fingers crossed, nothing will come up on that. But if it does, better to get ahead of it. You've also got the LinkedIn icon, which will run a LinkedIn search for that person. So that can be really good for, say, you've got a CV, looks really good. Maybe there's a few gaps there or something, or if you even you just want to double check that it is valid, you can quickly find them on LinkedIn using that icon and then cross-reference it against their profile. And also maybe you might see in their connections other people that look good, they've worked with, you know, that they've been associated with, and they could be a really good contact or candidate for you too. So never want to miss that opportunity. <clears throat> Finally, though, and I think one of the most underutilized, uh, oh, <laughs> underutilized ones is the map icon. So if you have got a, you put in address data, then you click that map icon and it'll actually bring up a search on Google Maps. Now, your first instinct may be, well, if I've got their address, why do I need to know that? Well, speaking as someone who lives in the Welsh Valleys, I know there could be someone that by distance, they're five miles away from me. But because of the way the valleys are laid out, actually, that could be an hour and a half journey. <laughs> so just being able to quickly check that map reference and see, even though they look like they're close, is it actually going to be feasible? can be a really quick way just to save you some time and make sure you're not putting forward inappropriate candidates or that your candidates you're approaching are going to be interested in that role. Fab. So uh, just to finish off then, so we've quickly given you six tips there. Which one would be your favourite or which one is the one that really grabs you and makes you think, yeah, that's the one I'm going to take forward from here and that's the one that's... Uh, I think can make an impact for me. <clears throat> I think it's worth bearing in mind that it's not about how many tips we show you on the day. It might simply be one. Yeah, I always say this. I've been in training a long time. It might be that I used to, in my younger days, do an Excel training course for eight hours. God forbid anyone would want to spend that much time doing Excel spreadsheets. Now, although some of us, and I know Rose is one of them, gets quite geeked out with the odd pivot table here or there. But I'd always say, look, I might show you eight hours worth of content, but there might be one tip, one little Easter egg that adds another 50 grand to your pipeline and I'll I'll accept full credit for that. So well done, Matt and Rose. I mean, out of interest, Matt and Rose, which would you choose if you had to literally like Desert Island Disc style um, tips for productivity out of those six? What would you choose? I mean, I definitely stick with design categories and skills, I think, just because I think, yeah. you know, you get a lot of return from that and it is quite yeah. simple. I think it's just it is underutilized and unfortunately it is sometimes misunderstood yeah. as well. Matt? And I'd, I'd go with that as well. And particularly if you've got automation, it's really good for your AI auto match, your semantic match, and just for generally sourcing. You know, you always yeah. want to use qualified data where you yeah. can. Totally, totally. You know, work with what you've got rather than finding more, plowing onto Bullhorn and going, what a mess, and then going outside and getting more and putting more on Bullhorn and going, it's too messy. I haven't got anything. It's like me every day. I've got nothing to wear. My wardrobe is chocker absolutely chocker sorry to trivialize the day of a recruiter right then let's turn that poll off and let's wrap up remember it's not the volume of tips we give it's what you do with them that counts okay then so some really cool tips there remember we've got sourcing we've got business development we've got all sorts of tips on our previous webinars i'll send you links to those so you can have a good rattle through who needs a christmas break so just think about what you're going to do now. Make a note to yourself. Turning up on the webinar is never the goal. That's the beginning. It's what you do with it that counts. Yeah, learning is never the goal. It's what you do. So be sure to try those tips. Be sure to sign up for recruitment HIT trial. Remember, put HIT in your chat if you want me to send you a link for a free trial on the HIT system. Loads of really cool tips on there. And obviously look out for our next webinar, which is account management. I know you all said BD, but warm calls are better than cold calls. Yeah, selling to clients who've already bought from you is easier. It's six to seven times easier. It's cheaper. It's quicker. Unless you want a really hard life. I think we've all been through enough in the last four years. Um, so remember, we've had our productivity webinar about automation earlier this week, which I'll send you a link to. We've talked about it. I'll keep talking about it. And obviously, call us if you need anything. Look out for other tips coming your way very soon. And we'll also send you a link to the account management webinar that we're going to be running in January. Great to see everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a great Christmas break. It's coming quick. Uh -huh. Enjoy everyone. Take care. 17 sleeps to go. <laughs> <laughs>